Hey, are you gonna make a video about this? Mmm, probably not. Are you? Mm, only if something interesting happens. I want to tell you all the story about what happened at Mr. Beast's 100k YouTuber Battle Royale. This is going to be quite a long video, so some of the drawings are going to be done by other people, and I'm going to be recording this on different microphones, so sorry if I sound different. I'm not that sorry, I don't care. And I want to tell this story in its entirety. I don't want to cut anything out or split it into two videos, because the story I'm talking about is already up on Mr. Beast's channel, so what's the point of making people wait for a conclusion when you can just go and see what happened? If you've already seen Mr. Beast's video, which a lot of you probably have, then this story has already been spoiled for you, and you know how it's going to turn out. But you should still stick around, because I'm going to go into detail about the events that led up to the big fight, and sprinkle in just a healthy amount of embellishment. And if you live under a rock and don't know what I'm talking about or who this Mr. Beast character is, then pull up a chair and let me explain studios, because this is going to be quite the video. This is Mr. Beast, a 20 year old YouTuber that after a couple of years of making cringy Minecraft intro compilations and how much money does X YouTuber make, he started uploading some unique challenge videos. But they weren't your normal challenge videos you see on YouTube, like the cinnamon challenge or the in my feelings challenge. He challenged his endurance by making videos like reading the dictionary in one sitting, or counting to 200,000, road to a million. Then he started one-upping his challenges by making some big and questionable financial decisions, like buying a hundred T-Rex costumes, or literally giving out tens of thousands of dollars to people. His videos got insanely popular, which meant he earned more money, which meant he could spend even bigger quantities of money on videos, and in turn get more views because of how crazy they were, and then he got more money, and the cycle just continued, making him one of the fastest growing channels on YouTube. In 2015, he celebrated his 7K subscriber milestone, and in 2019, he's got over 16 million subscribers. The dude's been blowing up. And about a year ago, I sent him a Twitter DM saying, where do you buy so many things in bulk? Like, uh, random example, sprinkles. Because I just, I needed to know, I just wanted to know who his supplier was, because Walmart banned me. <laughs> we ended up chatting on Discord for a bit, and he told me that the reason he makes videos is to entertain people. And with the amount of money he's giving away, and the fact that he's probably losing money on some of these videos, it's obvious that he's not making these videos for the money. And I respect that. Also in the call, he told me he was playing Fortnite, and I said that my favorite video game was Tetris, and he said, yeah, you seem like the kind of person that would like Tetris. What's that supposed to mean, beast? Well, who's laughing now? Tetris is the best battle royale game out there. Tetris 99. Download it for free on the Switch today. They don't sponsor me. So that's who Mr. Beast is for the six people watching who didn't know. Fast forward to February 2019. I'm at VidCon London. Me and Dave from Boy in a Band were getting ready to perform Life is Fun in front of a bunch of UK blokes, and I was browsing Twitter and I saw this tweet from the Beast himself. Attention epic gamers. On March 6th, I'm hosting an in real life YouTuber battle royale with airsoft guns. Royal. That says royal. <laughs> I'm just gonna use a computer voice. Winner gets $100,000. It will be in LA and similar to Dude Perfects his video, which BTW I really enjoyed. Reply if you're a Yautaber and want in. The tweet was only sent 10 minutes ago. It was pretty fresh. And looking through my pocket calendar, I wasn't doing anything that day. I could make it to the event. I asked Dave, do you think I should do it? I forgot what he said, but he probably said something like, Oh yeah, man, you'd be so great at it. When did you get so handsome? Mm, you're the best! So I replied to the tweet, I can make it. Then I got added to a group chat with six other YouTubers, so I wrote, Hello, competition. And the very next thing I saw was Mr. Beast added Logan Paul. And my mind went, Logan Paul? YouTuber's number one storytime animator, Logan Paul? Recently came out as a flat earther, Logan Paul? That Logan Paul? But then Logan Paul left, because he's a coward. So in the group chat, Mr. Beast explained the rules. It would be an airsoft battle, and everyone would have three balloons attached to them. And once your three balloons got popped, you were out. This match wasn't going to be a free-for-all like the Hunger Games. We were going to be on teams of three. So I was going to get paired up with two random people. I mean, I would have preferred if one of them had been a Paul boy, but no big deal. Hopefully, whoever my teammates are would know what they're doing and carry the team, because I sure as heck wouldn't. Jaden Animations was also at VidCon, and I told her, Guess what I'm doing. I saw your tweet. That's pretty epic, James. You're the best. She said. I said, Jaden, the battle's going to be in teams of three. I don't know anyone else that's going. Do you want to go to war with me? Now this was a first for me. Never in my life have I ever had to ask someone, Hey, do you want to fight in an airsoft battle royale against a bunch of other YouTubers for the chance to win $100,000? And Jaden said, Yeah, sure. I asked Mr. Beast, 
Are you still looking for more people for the YouTube Royal? My friend Jaden is interested, and I think it would be good if me and her were on a team because our channels are so similar. And he replied with, Yes, she got pewds and rewind. 100% want her in. And I was like, oh, yeah, she did do that. I probably didn't have to send you her channel. So Jaden never publicly said she was going to be in the fight, but she was. Surprise! Mr. Beast sent us a list of people that still needed to be on a team. Since it was only me and Jaden, I gotta pick someone from the list to be the third member of our team. It made me feel like the popular kids when they gotta pick teams for kickball. First time I gotta feel that experience, actually. I noticed one name on the list. Anthony Padilla. I've been to conventions and I've seen how young some of you are, so I gotta explain who Anthony is. Just bear with me, big kids. Before some of you were born, there was this big YouTube channel called Smosh. And when I was 12, that was one of the YouTube channels that I watched. So imagine how gleeful I was when a big part of my childhood asked me to do a couple videos with him to go up on his channel. Since Anthony and I had already done two videos together, and he's done one with Jaden, and he pet my dog, I thought we were close enough to have him on the team. Also, two of the three people on our team are vegan, so we decided to name ourselves 66% Vegan. That's actually not true, I made that up. The day was fast approaching, and I'm gonna level with you. We did not have high hopes for winning. Anthony tweeted out, Tomorrow I'll be in Mr. Beast's 100k YouTube Battle Royale with my teammates The Odd Ones Out and Jaden Animation. Between us, we see a total of three hours of sunlight a week. Please, send us words of encouragement and support. Everyone in the group chat was hyping up how good they were at shooting guns and how seriously they were going to take this. Meanwhile, between the three of us, we had played a total of two Fortnite games and a lot of Tetris. We showed up to the arena, and I barely knew anyone. Keemstar was there for some reason. I don't know if Keemstar likes me, though. At first, I wasn't too worried about getting hurt, because people were going to be aiming for our balloons, not our bodies. But when I saw the gear, the balloons were just about right over our heads. So everyone was going to have to William tell our balloons off. No big deal. None of us really need our heads anyway. No big deal. Before the main fight, there were a couple of practice rounds that were happening on a smaller field, and during the practice round, our team went into this little fort, Anthony's gun wasn't working, Jaden didn't know how to put the magazine in, and I didn't know how to aim. As soon as we left the fort, all of our balloons got obliterated. Oh, baby, a triple! Oh, yeah! Like I said, we didn't have high hopes. Whenever I go to an event, a question I get asked a lot is, will you make a video about this? And every time my answer is always, if something interesting happens. Look, I'm sorry, kid. I'm not just gonna make a video like, Hey guys, so I went to this school and talked to these kids about being a YouTuber, and everyone was well-behaved and super nice. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Be sure to check out the video where I went to Australia and signed posters for two hours. So I asked Jaden, are you gonna make a video about this? And she said, Probably not. But if you want to, you can. And I said, Yeah. Only if something interesting happens, though. And Jaden, I just wanna say, Thank you so much for giving me this. After the practice round, our team sat at a lunch table by ourselves because we didn't have any friends. And Jaden and Anthony talked to each other about being vegan, and I ate my chicken pesto sandwich as discreetly as possible. We also talked about potential strategies. Like, if someone started shooting at you, then just shake your head as violently as possible so that way they can't hit your balloons. Yeah, that will work, we told ourselves. But deep down, we knew it wouldn't work. I just hope we're not last, I said. I'd be happy if we made it in the top 10. There were a total of 13 teams. I would have been happy if we were in the top 10. I didn't expect to pop anyone's balloons. Just as long as we didn't lose horrifically, I'd be happy. So, I know how these videos work. About 40 people showed up to the event. There's no way that everyone was going to have an equal amount of screen time. If you're not interesting, then you're not going to make the cut. So, realizing this, our team also wanted some screen time. I drove an hour to get here. I didn't want it to go to waste. Some people took 14-hour flights from Australia to get here, so... I hope they had a fun time, yay! The match was about to start, and our team got dark green balloons, and we saw another team that had lime green balloons. We talked to the other green team, which consisted of What's Inside, his son Lincoln, and Casper Lee. We joked with them like, Hey, other green balloons, since no one can tell us apart, maybe we should team up. <laughs> okay, see you later. But the way the match played out was interesting. We didn't get to choose where we started. The map was split up into 13 different zones, and before the match started, someone on your team would pick a number out of a hat, and whichever number you got would be the zone you started in. That that way, when the match started, the teams would be equidistant from each other. And to make it more interesting, you didn't begin the game with any weapons. Those were scattered around the field. And the closer you went into the center of the map, the better the weapons were. Supposedly. <laughs> That's what they told us. <laughs> so we all put on our paintball masks and GoPros. One of the Hunger Games workers walked us to our zone. We looked around and saw one gun super close, one gun at a medium distance, and one gun pretty far away. 
Okay, Jaden and I will get the close gun, you go get that medium gun, and cover me while I get the far gun. Then an air horn blasted in the distance, and the game began. I ran to the medium distance gun, quickly snatched it, and ran back to where the group was. Jaden had her gun, but Anthony was empty handed. Someone already grabbed the far gun, he said, and the team that grabbed it was the white team. And it didn't take long for them to start sending BBs our way. There wasn't a structure we could hide in, and Anthony had no way of fighting back. Dude, I don't have a gun, so I'm like. The white team pushed us into a corner of the map and a chain link fence stopped us from retreating any further. Looks like we're not going to make it in the top 10 after all, vegans. But then we saw the team to our right, and it was none other than the lime green team. With very little options, we walked up to them with our hands in the air like we just don't care, hoping that they remembered the very unofficial agreement that we had between us greenies. And fortunately, they took pity on us. They let us walk past them without shooting us, and they gave Anthony a crappy handgun. And we all agreed, okay. Let's not shoot each other. Well, remember this. We later found a better gun for Anthony, and we also found a pretty good hiding spot that let us shoot at other teams while also keeping our precious balloons covered. Every seven minutes, the refs would close off part of the map, making it smaller, forcing the teams to get closer to each other, just like the Hunger Games. But in the meantime, we were perfectly fine waiting in our hiding spot for the seven minutes to go by. Would you rather uh -huh. eat a whole pack of cigarettes? Uh -huh. Smoke grenade over there. Or eat or smoke. Eat Ew. a whole pack of cigarettes. Oh, green. Or uh, sit in a dumpster overnight. It dumpster. <laughs> no, it's full of garbage and poop. I'd rather eat the calorie, right? Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> protein! <laughs> Alright, let's. I think we gotta make some headway or else we're just gonna be doing nothing. Well, but we're not losing. True. And then after the seven minutes, the map shrunk, and we and the lime green team got a little closer together, and what's inside asked one of the refs, hey, is it okay if we team up? And the ref said, I don't know, I just work here. So cool, we teamed up. It was funny because we still didn't completely trust each other. One time we moved locations and Casper told Lincoln, you go in front and I'll be in the back, so if they try to shoot you, I can get them. Well, there go my murder plans. We shot at other players and they shot back. Lime Green team lost some balloons, but I still had all three of mine. The map kept getting smaller and smaller, and one of the staff told us that we had to be behind this line of caution tape, but when I bent down to go under the tape, my three balloons got caught and I was stuck. I think other people were shooting at me. Shoot! My balloon's stuck! But one of the workers saw my helpless self and decided to free me from his trap, and surprisingly, none of my balloons popped. They're in that way. They're in there. I think I got my, my balloon pop. No, you're good. What the frick? Are these things made out of metal? Casper and Lincoln unfortunately weren't as lucky. All their balloons bit the dust. Our team and what's inside moved into a bunker. Anthony had one balloon left, Jaden had two, and I still had all three of mine. I got hit in the head, back, had contusions, and fractured my neck, but that's not important. The only thing that's important is that I still had all three of my balloons. Oh, phew, it was someone else. We found out what was inside what's inside's last balloon. It was helium and shame. He was standing in the bunker with us. Any one of our balloons could have been popped, but death picked him. Our lime green brethren were out. Look what's inside my hands. They're bullets. I want you to have them. And also, what's inside my heart is my faith in you guys. <coughs> Avenge me. We had gotten shot at a bunch of times, yet somehow we were still in the game. The amount of teams that were left were getting small. Someone was shooting at us from our old hiding spot, and Anthony knew that there was an opening on the side he could use for a surprise attack. So Anthony stealthily walked out of the bunker and flanked the other team. And at that moment, I thought of how cool it was that someone I had been watching for 10 years was one of my teammates. I remember voting for what food he was going to use back in Food Battle 2009? He's one of the pioneers of YouTube. He inspired countless young creators like me to start making videos. Did you know in Jake Paul's book, You Gotta Want It, Jake actually credits Smosh for inspiring him and his brother to make videos as well. <gasps> Anthony! <coughs> I... I got him. Was... was that the person who killed all of us in the training round? Yeah. I forgot this isn't a video game, and when you shoot someone's last balloon, they can still shoot you before they realize they're out. Man, this whole balloon system seems kind of flawed. You have to keep asking people, do I still have balloons? Because you can't see how many balloons you have yourself, and there's no way of telling if you're in or out. Anthony, take one of my balloons. Shut up. You have to win this for us. For Team 66% Vegan. No. Team... 
Vegan. <clears throat> Only Jaden and I were left. The map was incredibly small at this point, and we were hiding behind this box and water cooler thing sticking up. Alex Ernst, who I'm a big fan of, by the way, turned the corner and I shot his last balloon. That didn't make it in the final video, so none of you would have known that. Is that Alex? But then, I ran out of ammo. I'm out now. Oh no! Jaden didn't have any extra on her, so I couldn't do anything. We were getting shot at, and I had nothing to fight back with. I thought... Jaden, I might have to. I might have to find a... go find a gun somewhere. Well, the last one, then charge him, then... Alex tried to charge me, and he lost. Ah! Okay, so they are poppable. I'm surprised they made it this far. But then, something horrible happened. Jaden said... I'm, I'm out. Me too. And with that, it was over. pushing in 30 seconds! Wait, what do we do? I don't know. How are we gonna pop other people's balloons without BBs? Well, this looks like it's it, Jaden. It's over. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Every night I can feel my leg. And my arm. Even my fingers. The body I've lost. The comrades I've lost. Won't stop hurting. It's like they're all still there. You feel it too, don't you? I'm gonna make them pay. Oh, I got it! I got him! You got I him? got him! You got him? Oh! Did we? Is that it? That's it. Oh my god! Did we do it? Jaden wanted me to tell you that it sounds like she's crying here, but she wasn't crying because she doesn't cry. <laughs> and then the second game happened, but that no one cares about that one. And that's how Team 66% Vegan won $100,000. Splitting it three ways, we each got $33,333.33. But then we had one penny left, so we decided to donate it to charity. Okay, but for real, I do plan on doing something with the prize money, but that is another story for another time. Because this video is getting way too long and I just want to be done with it. Actually, can you leave some suggestions about what I should do? Because I'm not entirely sure what I should do.